gentleman came with his sister and he sat with his arms crossed. And I said to him, you know, did you lose your mom? And, and he goes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said to the mom in my head, I said, you got to give me something to say to him, you know, or, or I'm moving on. And she said, tell my son that I have Stevie with me. He literally, you think he saw a ghost. And I said to him, I go, was Stevie your pet ferret? And he goes, no. He goes, Stevie was our pet squirrel. My mom, wait, this, they apparently okay. they were doing renovations in the house and the, a baby squirrel got tra trapped in the house. So okay. the mom kept the squirrel. Okay. <laughs> As a pet, and the pet died. <laughs> I kid you not. They, when the mom died, they cremated the mom. When Stevie the squirrel died, they cremated Stevie. And they're on the mantle in their living room, the squirrel and the mom. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chinwag. I'm your host, Paul Giamatti. Uh, is that my cue? I guess so. I think it is. <laughs> and I am the other host, Stephen Asma. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Our guest today, um, this is kind of a fascinating one, the Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo. Yes, you probably know her from her hit TLC series, of the same name, or from her podcast, Hey Spirit, which is available wherever you get your podcasts. And she is also on tour right now. She'll be performing live in London for the first time in June at the Indigo at the uh, at the O2. That's is correct, that? Steve, the O2. <laughs> yes, you're seeing that correctly. Uh, we had a very uh, interesting conversation with her. I've never actually uh, talked to a medium before, no. which is specifically what she is, and that she's very adamant about that. And uh, uh, we we had readings, too. We, we both had readings from her. We both had readings before we did this with her, which was also extremely interesting, and you'll hear a little bit about that. Uh, we talk about a lot of crazy stuff, Steve. We talk about a lot of enlightenment, past life, uh, regression, uh, reincarnation, grief, uh, demonic possession briefly. Houdini, the great magician Houdini, anxiety, mm -hmm. skeptics. And then uh, probably the highlight is Stevie the pet squirrel makes Absolutely. an appearance. Stevie makes yet another appearance, Stevie the pet squirrel. So welcome to our chinwag with the Long Island medium herself, Teresa Caputo. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, got a lot of books. I do got a lot of books. <laughs> I have a big brain. Look at the big brain on Giamatti. Um, I do have a lot of books. It's all for show. Books. It's all just for show. Um, let me see here. Oh, for crying out loud. Now what do I do? Okay. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Sorry, Teresa. Hold on. That's okay. Right. I'm I'm used to it. It's usually the Wi-Fi. It's not the dead people that uh, you can't <laughs> get the, the connection. Wi -Fi. It's usually the Wi-Fi is the problem that's, with the connection. That's, there you go. <laughs> they come through clear. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Never it's the Wi-Fi. I just, Thanks I just blame it here. on the dead, so... They blame it on the dead. Yeah, they interfering on the dead. On the dead? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's basically what I do, too. I blame it all on my dead parents. There you go. Uh, so anyway, we were just going to, you know, dive yeah. right in and begin uh, begin just sure. asking you stuff. And Steve, I think you want yeah. to Yeah, one thing I was wondering about is that um, have you ever had like a uh, a person come to you and then you get a kind of psychic reading on them, but the reading is not positive. Like it's, oh my God, this person is going to die a horrible, painful death. No. And then, no, 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 okay, no. that's never happened? I, 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 no, because I don't do things like that. Well, I not that you're doing it, but don't don't no. the spirits just weigh in? They don't. They do oh. not. I so, I always, whenever I prepare for a reading, I do a certain meditation, and I always just ask for the highest good of all concerned, and messages that are going to help this person move on or uh -huh. find a way to move on after the loss of a loved one. I see. It's interesting to me because it's like. It seems like there's different things that maybe psychics can do or what or or, or function sure. as. Do you it doesn't seem to me like you do that kind of precognitive. No, I do thing. not. 
where it's like I'm going to I'm going to predict no. the future it, kind of thing. I I don't do that. Um and and I am also very adamant when spirit comes through and they talk about things that we're thinking about doing or possible even vacations or new jobs. These are all our free will choices. So spirit could quote unquote predict something or show me something. But mm-hmm. if we choose or someone else chooses a different path for us, it's a free You're not choice. seeing the future. Right. You're not seeing Correct. the future, in other words. Correct. You know, spirit <laughs> so might bring up and say to me, of... they're not going to the doctor. They need to follow up, like things like that. The only uh-huh. way that I want to know something, if you want to put it in terms of something negative, is if it can help someone or prevent something. That is the only way. Uh-huh. And usually that's if someone is not going to the doctor, not taking their medication. Uh-huh. Listen, spirit has called people out on many things. This person's uh, still smoking secretly uh-huh. yes, in the backyard. Yes, that has happened. <laughs> oh, right. That sure. has happened. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's hilarious. And that's that's hilarious. And or or like there's a kind of there's a person in your life, maybe you shouldn't be, uh, maybe you need to get away from this person um, kind of thing, stuff I really like that. I haven't really dealt with so much of that. Um uh, you know, telling Mm -hmm. someone again, what to do, what not to do. Um, They might acknowledge the things that are going on and might give us some Uh guidance to help us maybe look at things a little differently, but um, Uh it's never a prediction or telling us that we should or shouldn't do that. Unless if it has to do with healing, letting us release negative emotions, forgiveness, and so Uh on and so forth. Is there ever anything in kind of, I mean, I, I've always been really interested in Edgar Casey, you know, the, the, the sleeping prophet guy. He was, he was this guy in kind of the early part of the 20th century who would go into these kinds of, uh, states. He would have these kinds of episodes. Then eventually he could sort of control it and put himself in and out of these things. And they would talk to him a lot. He would often offer up physical healing Mm -hmm. things. Do you ever have anything like that happen or no, you don't have anything where he would be like, somebody would say, Oh my God, I have terrible migraine headaches. And he would say like, what you need to do is you need to get a, you know, a bunch of birch bark <laughs> oh, and, no. and, and strawberry <laughs> extract and no, mercury and like put that. it on your fork. But, it, but the thing <laughs> it is it would work. I mean, and there are, no, no, there's like hundreds, thousands of instances. Sure. of What if that's working. like the placebo and, effect? What do you think about that as a counter explanation, Paul? You mean like that? It's just you yeah, think like it's you working? think it's working, so it it because the placebo effect is very I strong. So. I mean, I suppose so, so that people could convince themselves I don't, it's working. I don't know, Maybe Casey. So. They won't. But you don't have you. Yeah, no. I mean, you don't have that kind of thing though. You don't have no. anything that somebody comes to you with no, a physical not ailment. At all. Not at all. And says, "Listen, I okay. don't even know, I, you know, how this works for me. I've I've always been yeah. like this. I've always sensed and felt things that nobody else did." Um, and I can't even explain what happens to me. It, I just physically start to feel things. I sense things and then things just become annoying for me. And, and I don't mean to sound rude to myself, but I'm real. I really don't know anything about anything. (laughs) I don't, I, you know, people go, oh, well, she does this. And and I'm like, oh, geez, I really not that smart. (laughs) Listen. Listen, I'm an actor. That sounds like me. It's like people are just like, how do you plan? I'm like, I don't know. I, I have no, no idea. idea. It, it really yeah. is a cra- you know, the craziest thing. It, a thousand percent. And I I mean, I'm still friends with a really good group of guys that I've been friends with since I'm 14. And one of them is a pilot. And he he says, people always ask me, oh, she cannot be that dramatic. And they're like, no, you're right. She's far more dramatic in person than she's on TV. <laughs> and they'll, they'll like just say, she's always been like this. You know? Do you have any... Uh, like family members who I'm just sort of imagining like a family picnic or a cookout. And <laughs> no, are, is there any family members who are like, I don't really believe in psychics. Like they're a skeptic and they're just no, like, try well, some well, people, people in the <laughs> you know, I don't look at myself as a psychic. I consider myself a medium, which I'm able to just communicate with people that have died. Um, I believe that uh-huh. people have gifts and everyone's different. Not one is better than another. And we might just use our abilities differently. Um, my dad uh-huh. is completely freaked out by what I do still, you know, oh. sometimes, you know, like uh-huh. if something happens, he'll be like, all right, when you go home and I still live next door to my parents. So I'll go over and he'll like feel weird. He'll go, listen, just take all the dead people with you. Don't leave them here. <laughs> <laughs> take all the dead people. Get them out of the house. Yeah, my dad's like, you know, like shoo, shoo, spirit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> do you feel that you are always surrounded by these things and that when you when you do a reading, you're just gaining access, that they're always mm -hmm. around Souls you? Are all, I, I always sense and feel things. The only time that what propels me to say something is that if there are three things that happen, if a soul shows me uh, who they are, like uh, a mother figure, father figure, or the relationship to that person. Then they show me, they bring me through the passing. Then they will show me the sign of the symbol of the burden or guilt that the person is carrying or what they might need to hear to help them move on with their life in a positive way. And once I feel those three things, then I will say something. Because listen, not everyone needs to, or maybe not, might not even want to hear from their loved one that has died. Mm -hmm. that's, that's probably yeah. very true. Um, and when you say you see these symbols, you're literally seeing them like you were talking about a rose mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And you, it's a feeling, it's a, it's an actual image. Some, it's a, sometimes I see an image, like I'll just see like a quick, like a film strip, um, you know, or I'll, I'll just see like certain random things. Is it like a toolbox of common images? Like you're like, oh, that one, or is it super random and you have to kind of interpret it new every time? super random and I have to interpret it differently at every time. That's how I build different. So for example, I used to see uh, a bowl of oatmeal, right? So it would be like, oh, someone loved oatmeal or their, their dad might have ate oatmeal every day. But then one day I said to that, to the person, I go, no, you know, my, my mom didn't eat oatmeal. And then they showed me like pacing in the driveway. And I just had this feeling of, oh, they were very routine. They ha She had to do the same thing. And she goes, yes, that was my mom. She was extremely routine. So a bowl of oatmeal is also my symbol for that someone is very routine. Oh. Weird. Oh, but <laughs> No, no, no. That's interesting. And so a bowl of oatmeal will come back to you for different Correct. people like sometimes? It could have a different meaning for someone oh. else. I, I had a weird experience. Like the sign thing fascinates me. I think Paul too, because... I'm really interested in like Jungian archetypes and are there signs and symbols from like the magic tradition that you see over and over again, you know, the sun and the moon. But I had this experience where I was walking down the street on my way to work in downtown Chicago and a brick fell off. They were doing construction. A brick fell off. It missed my head by like that much and bounced off this uh, sort of awning that was right there and shot across the the, the the street. But when I got to the to the top to where my office was, I had a friend who's quite mystical. And he was like, you look kind of shook up. And I was like, yeah, this brick just missed my head and almost killed me. And he said, he's like, <laughs> the universe is trying to tell you something. And for days I was like, yeah. well, what could it be? Like, what's the, you know, break up with the girl, marry the girl, eat the oatmeal, don't uh -huh. eat the oatmeal. Like, <laughs> how do you interpret the signs? Well, I interpreted that you were protected that you should not have been injured wow. and that I felt that you were being protected. Uh, okay. That's, that's a, uh, I yeah. like that interpretation, but there's the other that's ones that are possible too. Yeah, How do I, I narrow it down? I guess I go to you. I, 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 I don't know. I never had that. I was going to say, you know, I would normally have said, are you Italian with the bricks? <laughs> <laughs> with someone a brick layer? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> But, oh, interesting. But souls, there could but be that kind of souls thing, too. Will show me like, um, so for example, I'll say to someone, uh, if they show me a car accident, right? And the car is like completely mangled. And then they show me the person walking away. Sometimes they'll show me an accident where there's hardly any damage to the vehicle, but the person died. It's a symbol for where they were they, they were protected and the completely mangled that it wasn't their soul's time to leave the physical world. Mm -hmm. And then the other uh -huh. one with hardly any injury, that was the soul's time to leave the physical world. The things that I've learned from the souls of the departed, I always say, I'll find out when I when I get there. But the things that I communicate uh -huh. and channel and even talk about is through my own experience over the decades of me channeling spirit. Um, I, I was raised a Catholic too. Um, I know you're Catholic. Paul's a mm -hmm. heathen of some kind. Uh, I was not raised, but I am a heathen, but I didn't have any Catholic okay. upbringing. I'm, I'm, I'm part of, I mean, my father was only half Italian. You're, are you a hundred percent Italian? I'm Teresa? three quarters Italian. I have a little bit of uh -huh. uh, Norwegian. Oh, really? Interesting. That's an interesting yeah. combination. That's like two opposite <laughs> things. That's very like, um, 
so no, I was not raised with any of that. So I, I don't, I don't have those kinds of touchstones, but Steve, what well, I was just wondering, say? like, how do the Catholics, you know, respond to your ability, you know, to, as a medium, like, I think officially they're not yeah. happy, I'm assuming, but what kind well, of experiences have you had? Well, if, if you see behind me, I mean, I have uh, St. Teresa with rosary beads and uh, yoga beads. I have the Buddha with rosary beads hanging. I, I believe in all faiths. Uh-huh. I, okay. I'm, I'm raised Catholic. I, I am a practicing Catholic, um, but I believe it's just important to have something, to have some type of faith and to believe in something. Mm-hmm. Um, in my parish, mm-hmm. Everyone is very, very supportive of what I do. Um, mm-hmm. I, I really, you know, unfortunately, no matter what we do in life, no matter who we are, what our profession is, there's always going to be some type of negativity or someone's going to have something negative to say about it. That's just how I feel. And mm-hmm. I, I never ask someone to believe in what I do. I don't care if someone believes in what I do. I just want them to believe in an afterlife and to know that there truly is more to life than just here in the physical world. And more importantly, that their loved ones are still with them. And all those little things that go on around them that remind them of their loved one that has died, it's not a coincidence. It's not wishful thinking. Know that that's just a little hello from heaven. That's their soul letting you Uh know that they are with you at that exact moment. Do you feel like you've ever converted somebody in a sense like if you ever talk to like a hardcore atheist who was like this is absolutely not true but they walked away from you feeling like you had shown them something that they didn't think was true absolutely you do Um, many many times i mean there are people that come to my live show um thousands of people in the audience i don't stay on the stage i allow spirit to guide my physical body around the space i have cameras that follow me around big screen set up And I randomly, Uh I am just drawn to someone. I stop and start channeling. And literally people will say to me, well, I didn't come here. I, 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 Uh I, they just asked me to drive them and they had an extra ticket and literally (laughs) it changes their life. I mean, I had, I mean, you can't even make up the things that happen. I mean, I am the first, honestly, I'm the first one to say that what I do is absolutely crazy. How does someone communicate with someone Mm -hmm. that has died? But spirit has me talk about things that there's no way that I would know about. There was a gentleman just recently at one of my live shows. He was an older gentleman. He was a retired detective. And I didn't know this at the time. So I'm channeling him and I'm saying that there's this young boy and he wants to thank you for holding him as he died and to tell him that he was going to be okay and to hang on. And it turned out that uh, it was a detective, that there was some type of tragedy and he had held this young man and he died Uh in his arms. And he said he lived uh-huh. with that every day of his life. And this man uh-huh. was in tears and could not believe what had happened. And yeah. um, his wife was a little annoyed. So, of course, then I had to channel her dead people because she would have been pissed <laughs> at him. Oh, 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 she was jealous. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, she was jealous. <laughs> We've got more on the way with Long Island medium Teresa Caputo right after a word from our sponsor. And we're back with more Chinwag. And I, I, this is the first time I'd ever actually talked to a medium. I've talked to uh, different things, the Akashic record, like, uh, so that's like past mm-hmm. life stuff and okay. astrology and tarot and stuff like that. But I'd never done this in a medium. Now, and I was always under the impression that like mediums had a kind of guide, like a spirit mm-hmm. guide that helps them. And you keep saying spirit as if that was, and is that like a general term or is that something that comes to you and helps you specifically? I do have spirit guides. So I have two. Uh-huh. Uh, I have um, Salerna, who's an angel. And then there's also, I feel my soul is connected to Native American. So um, uh-huh. one of my spirit guides is, is Native. So I have a lot, of, I uh-huh. just have this fascination and this interest and this healing that happens with me uh, connected with Native American, so. Fascinating. And do they, do you do you see them? Do you feel them? I mean, it's like, I know I'm being very literal about it, but I'm actually really curious. It's like, do you see them? Do you, do you, you just feel their presence? Do you, do they come to you randomly? Mm-hmm. Do you control when they come? Do you ask for them? I, I don't ask for anything. That's the, that's the other thing. Uh-huh. No one has ever sat back and said, 
they're they're bothering Teresa. I am not bothering anybody. <laughs> the dead people are bothering me. I mean, I just want to make that clear. Like, I didn't <laughs> can wake you up turn it day. off? Got it. Can you shut it <laughs> off? Like, I don't want to. Yeah. Know, can yeah. you stop it? Well, I just don't. It. They like I said, they have to push me oh. to get me to say something. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. you can ignore him a little bit. It, it's not an ignoring. I, I I don't know. I I can't. I I honestly don't have the answer for you. Wow. I and and I'm I'm being very yeah. honest. I don't even know how this works for me. And it's just. Does it? Has it changed over the years Absolutely. from when you were a kid, or is it the same Absolutely. thing? Very different uh-huh. because I used to actually see. So I used to see people uh-huh. standing at the foot of my bed. I would see people following me. I would see you know a man sitting at the end of my bed. I mean. It, And when I embraced my gift, I said, I can't do this because I, the changing point for me was one morning I was getting ready for work. I was brushing my teeth. I looked up and there was a man standing behind me. Freaked out. I go downstairs. Now I go downstairs. Now there's a different man looking in the window, but there was nobody outside. And the first person that I read, I described what I had seen. And she said, that was my dad. That's what my dad looked like. Uh-huh. So sometimes, and so I said, wow. I, I can't, if I'm going to do this work, I can't see things like that. I can't, I'm afraid of the dark. I still sleep with a nightlight and I'm 55. So wow. let's just <laughs> put that out there, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I don't see that way. So I, they, then that changed to where I see the shadows and silhouettes and it's just a feeling. Again, I can't explain it. Yeah. Do you ever experience that it doesn't come through with a person? Do you do you do you meet with somebody and well, nothing just just not coming it's through? Never it's just nothing. not. It's just not. It's joining never up. nothing. It all depends on the person. Uh, sometimes um, people are resistant. Sometimes people, if they don't, uh-huh. I don't like to say believe. Uh, people don't understand what I do, um, or if they're too um, like. If this is my father, I want to hear this, say this, do this, do that. Uh-huh. That does affect yeah. the energy, you know? Yeah. But I, I I, learned a long time ago that this has nothing to do with me. This has to do with spirit. I am just the vessel that spirit uses to deliver these messages. And I, and I just feel that if it makes someone else feel better to say something bad about me, go right ahead. Sure. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. I mean, oh, th- there are people oh, that come oh. to my shows that have come for a reading. They don't know how to live. They don't want to live after the loss of a loved one. They lose their faith. They're not speaking to people and families and, you know, to family members. And they come and they have this experience and their life is completely renewed. And they have a new outlook mm. on life. They find a purpose for their life. And to me, that is something so amazing and beautiful and special. Well, I, I think you've uh, hit on the thing that I take away from your work that's really positive. I mean, of the two of us, I'm definitely more of a skeptic than Paul is in on all things like this included. But I also think like um, what I think you... Okay, so bear with me now. Here, yeah. Here's my view is like, I think respectfully that... What you do is amazing, but it's not what you think you're doing. This is just this is the skeptic talking now. Okay. I think you're you might be an extremely incredible, like a sort of a, a genius at perceptual okay. e- empathy. Like you can read okay. people's um, nonverbal cues and what they need, and that you see that they're in pain. And then I think what you are able to give them is a kind of consolation or comfort. And I think that that's a gift that you have. And I think a lot of us are just damaged beings and we want to hear things like your father is proud of you, you know, who's gone to the other side. But then that seems like that to me, like that's enough. Like, so because I was raised a Catholic, I saw priests do this and I know shaman do this. It's like human beings need this kind of help. But for me, it's hard to believe the next step, which is that you're actually communicating with the other right. side. You know I'm what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. it's got to come from somewhere. I mean, I've said for years, I don't know how this works. My, I have no personal thoughts, feelings, or emotions when I channel. And I actually yeah. had someone read my brain as I was reading someone. And it showed that yeah. I am able to access a part of my brain that we typically don't. And my brain actually showed no activity while I was channeling. So I don't, I, I don't know. And I, I am, I am probably the most sheltered, (laughs) naive person you will ever meet. 
I mean, up until really? I was in my 30s, I couldn't even leave my house. I was so emotionally crippled by anxiety and fear. Uh, really? And it was it because mm-hmm. of this gift or yes. was it because of really? And it made, so it was a burden in some ways for a while. Well, I, yes, I didn't know what it was at the time. I just thought this is the way that I was. And ah, so because of the way that I feel and because I would leave my house, I would walk into a room and I would feel something. And so, for example, I remember walking in a bed, bath and beyond. This was when I was learning to try to understand what was happening to me. And I was standing in an aisle and all of a sudden I felt this. I got this sharp pain in my chest and I couldn't breathe. My first instinct was I have to leave the store. So if I would leave the store, it would go away. But realizing that I was leaving mm. the energy behind and I started hearing uh, the ones on the left. This is all I heard, the ones on the left. 10 seconds later, this woman walks up next to me and says, which sheets do you like? She said, my husband just passed unexpectedly of a heart attack and I want to change the bedroom and I don't know what sheets to pick. So I picked the ones on the left. And she said, <laughs> those are the ones that my husband would have chosen. Uh-huh. <laughs> like a random, like and why? I mean, yeah. I, I'm minding my own business, not bothering anyone, but to feel the need to come up and ask me and to share her whole life story about what happened to her husband. And (laughs) I know that sounds odd, but. But, you know, this is a thing. My mom is a uh, a psychiatric nurse for 40 years and she, every wacky person in in the building (laughs) would somehow like gravitate to her. Mm -hmm. And I just think there are people with it. You have a charisma that draws a certain kind of person. Mm-hmm. And I, we were always uh, mystified. Yeah, you I get, get that? that too. I get a lot of, yeah, I get a lot of, well, I get a lot of people opening themselves mm-hmm. up to me and stuff like that. I get a lot of people who open themselves up to me because I probably doing what I do have a certain amount yeah. of empathy. Mm-hmm. That's just, you know, or, or an intuition or empathy. I don't though. I'm not able to go mm-hmm. to any level that you go to, but it's like, but I definitely, you know, that sense of empathy is super hyper developed. Yeah probably more so in me. And maybe that attracts people. You know, there, there's I a think, certain, it's like magnetic in some way that draws people to you. And surely what you're doing must draw people to you and must have mm-hmm. always probably drawn people to you. Yeah. Um, do you, can you sense it in other people? Can yeah, you sense like, I'll oh, this feel, person has something? Uh, that's why I was, I was very surprised, Stephen, when, because I felt like you were very like spiritual. Like it was almost like that you had, maybe it was just the understanding of the type of faith that maybe you follow or your beliefs. But I felt that you sensed and felt things that maybe the average person didn't. Oh, well, I'm sure that's true. So. <laughs> I'm no, no, I, no I, I think I, that is true. And actually, Steve is Steve. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think you are a sensitive guy, and you actually no, no but I actually do think that is true of you, though. I do think there is more. You are Listen, definitely uh, yes, it's true. In do, do people could, spiritual matters, and but do people like call that. it an intuition, a gut instinct, your little Jiminy Cricket, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. don't veer from it. You know, no, I, the, I agree. It's the, important. The I agree with that you. I I mean, I wish you could understand what I went through in my life. I mean, I could not sleep out of my home. I would wake up with these blood curdling screams. And my mom would say, uh, they would walk into my bedroom, like thinking that I was going to be murdered the way that I, and I would just be sitting up, just screaming and yelling and never awake, never remembering anything, but always feeling being attacked. And I know that those were the souls trying to communicate with me. Um, I, my childhood was very frightening, but I thought that this is what everyone Uh. went through. I thought this is what everyone Uh. experienced. And then my Uh. anxieties got so bad that my mom was like, maybe you should go see this spiritual healer. And through that, through those classes is that I learned that I was saying things that meant absolutely nothing to me, but were life changing to the person that I was speaking to. Uh. I mean, it is, I've been doing this a very, very long time. And I get and respect that people don't understand what I do. But Uh to watch someone go from this fragile, broken person to be able to smile and you can actually see the healing happen right in front of you is something absolutely incredible. You can't even make up what goes on. I just did uh, back in December uh, here at the Paramount on Long Island. um, I started with this woman, her son um, had passed 
uh, in, in an accident. And this woman was so broken that she couldn't even look at me. And here she was in hopes of hearing and wanting to hear from her son. And here this is, this moment is happening. And I could feel that she was so broken, she wasn't ready. So I moved on to another soul. I ended up all the way in the back of the theater. And I end up channeling uh, a brother to a young man. And I said, well, your brother has a message for your mom. And he said, my mom was the woman seated in the front that you started the show with. Mm. And at that moment, then she was able to be open to hear the messages. The sun came up. It was this beautiful moment. It's almost like, you know, how crazy is this? You can't, you can't even make it. There are countless stories of, you could try to figure it out, but it's crazy and insane. (laughs) Yeah. Do you, did you feel like your anxiety and and all of that went away once you, accepted that this was you or that you could actually apply it to a way that felt like it was doing people good that you sort of like, in a sense, you accepted right. what you're, what other people are accepting. You're right. getting them to accept you. You did for yourself in a way. As, and then the anxiety well, I mean, went away. I still have anxiety, but not like the way that it was. I mean, I could, <laughs> I couldn't leave the house. I mean, you know, um, yeah. yeah, but I have anxiety just trying to put on a pair of jeans after COVID. So <laughs> sure. Sure. Listen, absolutely. But, um, but, uh, it, it did because I feel things to like bring me through the departure. So I would feel things from, and and I yeah. didn't understand what that was. And then I struggled with my gift for over five years because I couldn't understand why, why was I blessed with this gift and who's going to want to come and see a medium. And what I learned was yeah. that unfortunately, when we lose a loved one, we might be left with some negative emotions that do not give us the ability to heal. So I use my gift for healing. I don't work with the police department. I don't solve crimes Uh or anything like that. Strictly for healing. I I think that that's a, I mean, that's a great service and and an amazing thing. And and so that's why I said, I think you have a gift for this. I was thinking about, um, Paul, you and I have talked about this a little bit before, but I was thinking about the the great magician Houdini. Uh He testified in Congress against psychics, but- he was himself a believer in the afterlife and yeah. he uh, his father i think was an orthodox jewish you know rabbi and it, i thought it was yeah. interesting that houdini and his wife had like a special secret word and they they mm. said only the two of them knew it and if one of them died and in a séance the other one was introduced they should give that secret word as a kind of proof you know right. i just find that fascinating yeah. After he died, every year the wife would have a seance and try to meet him and get the word. And every year, not nothing. Oh, wow. But this this went on for years well, like, yeah. in LA. That's a seance that you know. Yeah. I that's you know. I, I mean, would. I don't know if I would do a. Seance. Is that a different thing? I don't know. It, is that something that you say? Hey, You're I'm like, not, no that's way. That's not I'm my not thing. The seance. Yeah. <laughs> no way. I'm not doing a seance. Like a lot of times, people, you know, Ouija boards and things like that. Yeah. Stay clear of those. I mean, I would never. Oh, I would okay. Can you explain though? What? Because to my mind, it's like you're in that yeah, territory. Why? Why? What's the difference like for you? Because to me, that could be lower if you want to talk about uh, demonic energies uh, or lower energies, oh. energies that might not come through and say good things. So these are kind of like portals, tools that are kind of going to hook you into the wrong thing potentially. But some people like that. Some people find enjoyment out of that. I feel what I do is completely yeah. different. It's for healing. I mean, to have the, you know, you, you also have to realize some people come, parents aren't supposed to bury their children. Mm-hmm. People come, yeah. they lose their yeah. child. They don't, ha- they don't, they, they will literally look at me and say, I don't have a purpose anymore. Mm-hmm. I lost my child. Who am yeah. I? Or is it someone that comes, yeah. they're young and here they are in their twenties and they lost both of their parents and they're like, I'm an orphan. Who do I belong yeah. to? And to be able to yeah. restore their faith. I feel that what I do is so much more than just communicating with people that have died. I feel that it restores people's yeah. faith and not necessarily a religion. It could be in anything, faith in uh-huh. themselves, faith in what they're supposed to do, whatever that is. And now this very important message from our sponsor. And now more exciting chinwag. 
do people come back to you for repeated readings? Will someone come back to you and say, do another yeah, one? People, and do you have people that you, you regularly uh, read for? I used to, but I always had a, I had kind of a rule that they had to wait at least a year. I wanted it to help uh-huh. them. I didn't want it to be a crutch for someone because I right. do feel like that uh-huh. there are that they could be like uh, medium junkies, that there are people that will go from medium to medium <laughs> to medium. <laughs> and really? to me, <laughs> that's <laughs> Yeah. No, I can totally. No, I get yeah. that entirely. I can you know, completely. Because you're hearing yeah, these I things that are making you feel good. But what I would want people to do, I wanted uh, them to leave with the tools to open their connection. And for uh-huh. them to be able to have that daily connection that they didn't have to go seek out a medium. I mean, this is crazy. This is what I do for a living. I'll be out of a job. <laughs> but I really. <laughs> yeah, right. Just creating mediums. I really yeah. want to use my gift for healing. And I want, I, that's one yeah. of the reasons why I, w- one of my books that I wrote was Good Grief, uh, talked about the grieving process. All the, and you might go through all these things. You might not. But here are yeah. the tools to try to help you through that. One thing you said when, when, when we were doing the, when you just did the reading mm-hmm. for, for me, and you said you think that everybody would be able to not necessarily talk the way you do, but but everybody has access Correct. that actually, because I think yeah. this too. I think that everybody does Absolutely. have access. I mean, I don't know where my parents are. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not literally seeing right. them or speaking to them. But you said to me, you asked me, do I feel? Mm-hmm. And I do. I do. So it's like, I do think that there's a... That 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 you 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 can access it not necessarily at all the way you're doing it, but I do feel like it is something. It's there. They're they there. I think they're there. I don't know. I'm not religious. I don't believe heaven or hell. I don't know where right. that where they are or what they are or even if they're still them mm-hmm. necessarily. It's like you know. But there's something to be accessed all the time. And you you think that everybody is able do. to do that. And to some I believe degree. that that's yeah. a soul bond that can never and will never be broken. I believe we all have right. that ability to connect with our own yeah. loved ones that have died. Yes, that's exactly, I remember, because I was, I did sort of fancy myself an atheist oh. for a long time. And I think I did it because I think it 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 freaked people out. When I was younger, I was like, oh, this is a good way to freak people out. This is kind of a, you know, I was being kind yeah. of a provocative, you know, I was like, yeah, this is going to freak people out if I tell them I'm an atheist. You know, so it was like, I don't, but, but obviously I didn't really, because I believed in ghosts and things like that and stuff like that. Um, but I remember thinking when my son was very small and thinking now the 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 love i feel for mm-hmm. this kid is beyond belief and i remember thinking oh that's yeah. the soul that 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 connection mm-hmm. i'm feeling is the soul mm-hmm. and i thought that is indestructible. Mm-hmm. You can't, there must, there's some sort of energy that leaves a trace behind. I mean, it's impossible yeah. to destroy that. Mm-hmm. I actually, that's I agree what with I think. It. So when you say that about soul yeah. bond, I'm like, but you, you get what I'm I saying. Totally, right, I Steve? agree I mean, with you totally like, on that. I, that's a feeling state that's so profound and essential mm-hmm. that I believe it, it, it rules your life in a most positive way. And then when you lose that in these sad cases where you lose a loved one, I go into the the workbench, you know, where my dad used to have his tools and I'm, I'm he's he's passed away and I'm like asking him where's the plumbing wrench dad and we'll have this conversation in my head and it's very it's very meaningful <laughs> for me and it's I feel pointing out yes. that's the there's the staplers <laughs> you know it's ridiculous but there yeah. is something about the bond that's so defined mm-hmm. who we are that you you you're just incredibly attached doesn't seem like that can you it's yeah. indestructible right. it feels like you know what I mean and it feels like it's the fabric of everything mm-hmm. underlying But I saw everything. priests say you know, that, see. you know, because I grew up as an altar boy, so I saw so many masses, and the, and I served many funerals, and the priest would say things, and it really would be very consoling, like, your loved one, you will see them again, they're, they're mm-hmm. well, they're okay. And I just find that incredibly consoling. But as a philosopher, I'm like, yeah, but is it true? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, does well, listen, that- <laughs> so this is what I say to you. If it's not true and there is nothing, then you're not going to know that there's anything. That's so true. What, you don't lose what, much. You're right. You, you don't you, lose. What much. do you have to lose? <laughs> you have true. something. What to, to, to live a positive, faithful good point. life, right? Yeah. I mean, that's people how, are afraid. Yeah. They don't yeah. want to be a dupe. They, they don't want to they, seem like yeah. a stooge. But I don't care. Mm-hmm. I, I'll be a. I I'll think, be a stooge. Listen, we we also yeah, fear no, what we yeah. don't know, right? Yeah. Uh, I, listen, yes. I've yes. always had a fear of death. I'm not afraid to die. I don't want to die. 
but I'm not afraid uh-huh. because of the work that I do. And I see that I, there are so sure. many things that souls have shown me of they'll describe exactly what happened in the room before they died. And mm. it's how uh-huh. would I know that? There's, I didn't make it up. Uh-huh. I didn't, I couldn't read it off of someone's body language of what, Uh who was in the room, where they were standing, what they were doing. Um, To me, it's still, after doing what I do all of these decades, spirit always blows my mind with the validations of the things Uh that I Uh would not know, could not know. Have you ever talked to people who've had sort of after Mm. the kind of near death experiences and Mm -hmm. stuff like that? And, and, and did they validate a lot of things you feel like for, for you, they probably bring back a lot of information that seems that resonates with what you do. They'll say what they they? saw, what they felt that it was so peaceful. They'll, they'll, they'll describe scenery. I mean, everyone is different. Yeah. I feel like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I was just thinking that, that, uh, I'm wondering what you think, Teresa, and Paul, too. Like, what about if somebody says, well, maybe it's like a fortune cookie effect, like where if you just if we if we say something that's sort of vague, like you get a fortune cookie and it's sort of vague enough, but kind of specific enough that then you grab onto it and you go, oh, it's really about this thing in my life. Mm -hmm. And the subject sort of provides like the interpretation. What do you think of this? Well, I Teresa, think, what do you think? Because I, I know what I well, think Well, interpretation, because everyone is different and everyone interprets things differently. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, how could I explain this? Um, so, and I can only go by with how I work and trying to, what you just said, Stephen, placing myself in when I work. Like, say, when I'm in a theater of 5,000 people and I'll literally come off of the stage and just stop and stand in front of someone and say, did you lose your son? And did he die in a shooting? That's, yeah, that's pretty specific. Yeah. I mean, I'm not asking people to ask me anything. I literally will walk up to someone and say, did you lose this so is and what so? I'm saying. And yeah. did they pass in such and such way? Hmm. And then, and and listen, all to that, Stephen, I, I get that there are common ways people die there are a lot of, you know, because people would say to me, of course I lost my father. Of course he died of a heart attack. Right. Of course I had an Uncle Anthony and a cousin Johnny boy. You know, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, I've i said, don't give, don't give names because names could be common. <laughs> you know, I, I want spirit to talk about crazy things where you're going to sit back and go, why would they bring that up? Why? Why would they say that? That's the point. They're yeah. so random I, and even things that you've forgotten about because the yeah. souls see how we live our lives differently after they die. You said something to me about mm-hmm. shoes, about my father, about shoes. And I'm like, I don't know where you got that from. But for me, wherever I went with that, and I do go a lot of places okay. about shoes with my father. I'm like, that's a very resonant thing for me, whether you, whether you wherever you pulled that out of. So for me, Steve, it goes back to the thing I said to you once. I did this Akashic oh, yeah. record reading, which is past mm-hmm. life stuff, uh, uh, Teresa, you know, and it's all like, and it's, uh, and it's also gets into, are you from other star mm-hmm. systems and stuff like that? It gets into some pretty like wild territory. And it turns out, believe it or not, I am apparently from some <laughs> star systems and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I believe it too. And so, but what's interesting is I remember afterwards telling a friend of mine who said to me, how much of this do you really believe? And I said, Mm. All of it, not because I literally necessarily believe it, but because it gets my mind going and it gets my it gets my spirit going in a way that suddenly it seemed meaningful to mm-hmm. me, the stuff I was pulling out of it. So that's the fortune mm. cookie effect you're talking yeah. about, Steve. It's like you say shoes to me yeah. and I go somewhere about shoes with my father. And it's like, you know, and you, you say you said any number of things that I was like, <laughs> well. I don't know whether you're literally seeing the things you're seeing. I mean, you said a thing that sounded exactly like my mother would have said, (laughs) but I was like, but some of the things were like, I don't know, but yeah. And it's not, I I don't, uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it gave me something useful, whether or not I even know, believe whether you were specifically getting it from somewhere real or not. And to me, honestly, Paul, it doesn't matter. Did it bring you peace and comfort? 
That's well, all I, exactly. That's, that's all what I, I mean. Care about. And it's like, yeah, you know, and I, and yeah. I don't and, mean and, to sound yeah. so rude when I say to people, I don't care if someone believes that's not why I do what I do. I don't need people shouting from the roof. Well, you can't, you can't. Yeah. Care. You can't take yeah, that on board. Not, yeah. Exhausting. Because this doesn't no. have anything to do with me. Like I explained to you before. I mean, I've done past life regressions. I've, I've also, uh -huh. I do believe that when we get that deja vu, that's the soul recalling something in a previous life. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it is reincarnation something you you subscribe to? I don't know. I, I believe that our souls do come back. I know that my soul, this is uh -huh. my soul's last journey here in the physical world. Wait, how do you know that? That's interesting. How do you know that? So I did uh, a, through one of my past life regressions and through one of the things that this was, my soul has reached that point where it's not going to choose to come back. And I actually did an, uh -huh. uh, my numerology chart and my numbers, and it did show that this was uh like the end of my physical life and my soul wasn't going to come Amazing. back does that freak you out no because i i know that i'll just now bother all my relatives here <laughs> no true ah interesting well that's interesting. a common belief in um in of course asian countries that have a kind of karma that dictates your reincarnation and there is this kind of status right. where you're you're basically trying to achieve a level of enlightenment where you're never going to return again. And that's like the next oh. step. Yeah. And so then that, that okay. next step is where. It yeah. would make sense. Yeah. That would make sense for you because you clearly achieved some sort of level of something being able to do what you can do. Do your, do your kids have it? I you do. have kids. Yeah. Do they have any of these powers? That's a good any, question. Do they have any of this? My, my daughter carries a lot of abilities like myself. Uh, my son, mm -hmm. uh, different. He's just very sensitive, intuition. He's his gifts uh, might be a little bit different. He's not as spiritually connected in 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 a channel form, I should say. Do you know other people who who have this? You 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 have friends, other people, other psychics that I you are mediums that, that you is, deal that, with. And, that is a very different uh -huh. of mine that I actually helped her uh, understand her gift. Um, mm -hmm. I believe on both sides of my family that uh, my, my, my one grandmother did soul traveling where her soul would actually uh -huh. leave and she would watch. And then she told me one day she yelled and said, you get back in that body right now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And she goes, and it never yeah, happens absolutely. again. <laughs> but now do you think that, um, th that there are souls I'm not sure where I stand on the soul thing. Like okay. I, I, I like the idea, but I'm also skeptical of that too. But, <laughs> but now, what about animals? Because yes, like if, animals you know, have yeah. come through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, you, you can, you can yeah. communicate yes, with animals. I have. Yes, that's really sure. interesting. Yeah, How, can you tell us a story about animals coming through? What, okay. Oh, so this will be a good. One. This, this probably happened probably about 20 years ago. I used to do restaurants and there was a, a, a gentleman came with his sister and he sat with his arms crossed and he was like, he wasn't, he wasn't believing anything. And I said to uh -huh. him, I said, you know, did you lose your mom? You know, there's a mom energy standing next to you. And, and he goes, maybe. <laughs> so the mom's saying some things to him. And I, I said to the mom in my head, I said, listen, I said, you got to give me something to say to him you know, or, or I'm moving on. And, um, she said, tell my son that I have Stevie with me. Uh -huh. He literally, you uh -huh. think he saw a ghost, no pun intended, wow. turned white, <laughs> almost fell off his chair. And I said wow. to him, I go, was Stevie your pet ferret? And he goes, no, <laughs> he goes, Stevie, <laughs> was our pet squirrel. <laughs> my mom, wait, they, they apparently, they were, doing, they were okay. doing renovations in the house and the, a baby squirrel got tra trapped in the house. So the mom kept okay. the squirrel <laughs> okay. as a pet and the pet died. <laughs> I kid you not. They, when the mom died, they cremated the mom. When Stevie the squirrel died, they cremated Stevie and they're on the mantle in their living room, the squirrel and the mom. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, that's wait a awesome. second. So <laughs> that's amazing. Now, when you did you? I'm just so curious because it's like, yeah, a squirrel, yes. a ferret. Okay. And it's like, did you see something? Did you just feel like it's something that looks like I a, ferret, a ferret? Looks like a squirrel. So I'm something. thinking nobody has a squirrel. 
I mean, you would, That's let me true. tell you something. Yeah, I go to believe. dog, cat, yeah. you know. Maybe a goldfish? <laughs> yeah. No. The ferret is, yeah, no, ferret is very specific. It just specific. recently happened again. I said to someone, did you have a squirrel problem? You would not believe how many people had squirrels as pets. Squirrels, squirrels. I go, did you have a squirrel problem? They're like, no, but we had a squirrel. That would, that would, We had a pet squirrel. Like, Maybe they have that, unique fantastic. souls that are weird. trying to like get weird. back into this world. Very weird. Weird. Listen, weird. There's, no, there, there's no explanation. And I always, yeah. you know, to speak to people after they come, and have the experience, whether it be in a live show, a one-on-one -on -one reading, how it has changed their life in a positive way. And people, you know, people That's even true. say it all the time. One of my live shows, the most common thing that people will say, they'll say, I had no idea what to expect when I went into that theater. I personally mm. did not get read, but what I witnessed was absolutely life-changing. And to show you mm. how powerful the experience is, the people will go on and say, and then I realized that there were so many people that needed to hear from their loved ones more than I did that night. So. I was recently just uh, looking at this kind of history of Rome and they were, they were talking about that, uh, you know, Romans were very much interested in uh, mediums and getting, you know, uh, I don't know what the word they would have used. They're not psychic, but you know, some kind of message. And, Oh, they definitely yeah, they believe in ghosts. ghosts. And they, mm -hmm. there was like a sure, there was a yeah, manual yeah. that listed the top things that people wanted to know about. And it's really funny oh. because the three things were no, there were two things mostly. One was money. Like, am I gonna get money? Uh, and the uh, yeah, and the really? other one was um not money, but romance. Like, uh, am I gonna have a baby? Uh -huh. Am I gonna get mm -hmm. married? But I think like what I hear you saying. And when I talk to people about it now, we're also, we would add the question of grief is like a really mm -hmm. big thing for us. So these three things seem like really mm -hmm. like the main topics. Does that sound right to you? I, I feel people ask me, what do you think people search for when they come to you? And I think what they want to know yeah. is if their loved ones are okay. Okay. And if they're at peace. It's the grief thing. Yeah. Uh huh. That's it. Yeah. Grief. Yeah. That's it. I want to know and about money. Me, so... <laughs> Listen, don't, nice, Steve. let, let nice. me tell you something. Don't you think that if I could nice. get numbers or predict the future, I would have asked for right. a lot of numbers yeah, already? I mean, right. Right. I'm not a be picky. Right, my I don't God. need to make a million. Gold you know? mine. An absolute gold. But people must think you can I, yeah. do that. Yeah. You must get people all the time. You know, just like I, I don't mean to become um, uh, emotional, but the work that I do, I, I mean, I consider it an honor and a privilege to do what I do. Yeah. And to yeah. know that the work that I do empowers people and it gives them their life back in a lot of ways. There are unfortunately evil people out there. They pretend to be me. They ask people for money to, I, yeah. I formed a, actually my fan club. I formed a fan club. It's 1999 to join because I I did it because I had to pay someone to run the fan club. Um, any any <laughs> proceeds we did it for for price protection for the for the ticket sales. Uh, people were they were reselling my tickets for a thousand three thousand dollars a ticket. So right. I formed this fan club. Uh. All proceeds of my fan club I give back to my fans. Um, I was able to buy headstones for people that couldn't afford a headstone. Um, nice. Yeah, I do a lot of amazing things. Nice. With the work that I do. And uh, no doubt. And this which leads me to the question I'm really interested to ask you. Are you afraid of losing mm. the gift? Or do you do you fear that it might go away? No. Is it is it something have you ever felt that it's like not quite there or anything no. like that? It's who I am. It's a part of me. It's my soul. It's just, it's just me. I'm it's, I'm being me. This is who I am. Uh -huh. And and so it's not something that can go away. I, I don't know. Necessarily. I, it's like I don't have that yeah. answer. I, I I don't know. Do I feel that? No. Interesting. I will always yeah. it's never I feel that I will always have it because I respect it and I honor it with dignity and grace and respect. And my gift is always growing and and I'm always learning and growing every day through my gift. Uh-huh. That's interesting. That's something that I always think about 
artists actually too. I mean, it's a kind of, it's like yeah. an artist, you know, it's like, if you treat, you got to treat it with respect, it mm -hmm. won't, it's never going to yeah, leave you. Paul, do you, you just have to do you ever it. feel like, uh, do you ever have this worry that like, you're going to, it's not like you're going to wake up and not be able to act, but do you feel like your skills will slip away or something? You wonder, yeah. you worry. I mean, and there are literal things with an actor, like I'm going to start, I just worked with a guy recently, older guy, can't remember his name. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's not that he can't act. He can right. still act because mm -hmm. when he does it, it's like, wow. But it's like, but he's, but it's, and it's funny to watch. And you think to yourself, my sure. gift, can I always yeah. hold on to my gift? Will my gift always be here? You know, and for you, it's just interesting to me. But I mean, it's interesting, as you say, it's such a part mm -hmm. of who you are. Whereas I guess sometimes I think of it as almost it's something separate from me, but it isn't really. It isn't separate from me. And things may happen like I'll start to forget my lines, but no, I, I think I'll always be able to do it. It's just, I don't know. It'll go, it'll go in and out. It'll mm. go up and down. But that's never happened with you, Teresa. You don't feel like sometimes it's it's waned. Sometimes it's always kind of been there. Yeah. My gift, yeah. my gift has always been there. Um, has it grown? Has it changed? Absolutely. And what people also don't yeah. realize. It has to also do with the person receiving the messages. If somebody's going to resist uh -huh. it, I don't have control over uh -huh. that. And that brings me back to a reading that yeah. I did. And it, this only happened once. Uh, over 20 years ago, I had a gentleman come in, sat down, again, arms folded. <laughs> and I was saying things to him. And I, I was giving my speech. And I said to him, I go, you know, I don't know if this really is for you or if you're ready. And um, he said, no, 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 I'm I'm interested. I want to see what you have to say. I said, okay. So unfortunately, this gentleman had lost his wife and she had passed from a brain tumor. And I said some things to him and he looked at me and he said, um, I want to thank you. I respect you, but you're right. I'm not ready for this. And uh -huh. he, he, he was crying and um, he uh -huh. thanked me for sharing my gift, but he wasn't ready. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's interesting. because yeah. when, when you I'm did sure. the, the reading on me, I have to say I was um, not uh, not um accustomed to having such a level of intimate conversation with somebody who i don't already know well so Correct. i can see that that's a that's a big deal mm -hmm. for people yeah, yeah. but but, but what i also be. love is when people when they um when they leave a reading for me they'll say i i actually felt like i was talking to my loved one like mm. i felt like i was talking to my mom like i felt like i was talking to my son or to my daughter and and that's huh. what I love. That's why I want spirit to communicate with that personality, to show us how uh -huh. they how they are, that they are healed, that they're not suffering, or still sick. Interesting. Well, I I uh, that's yeah. I think uh, we Amazing. we don't always learn things in the chin wag, but I will say that in this case, I learned that uh, you are a very um, well intentioned, sincere, and talented person. Now, I also learned Indeed. that uh, squirrels <laughs> come up regularly yes. in, the, in, the, in the search for but the dead. There's a lot of dead squirrels trying to yes. reach. Well, through it's only happened three times. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot. That's weird. I mean, that's a lot, actually. And for squirrels. No, this has really been really yeah. fascinating, Teresa. Really fascinating. No, what you do yeah. is extraordinary. And it's really it's a lovely thing. And you're a lovely Thank person. You. And it's really no, yeah. you really are. And it's really been a pleasure. Being able to talk to you about all Thank this you. stuff. And thanks for the reading. Yeah, Thank you so much. It was really, really very, very well, lovely. That means thank the world to me. Much. I want to thank you, Stephen and Paul, for what you said. Uh, because like I said, I do consider cool. it an honor and a privilege to do this work. And the fact that you trusted me, whether you understood my gift or not, sure. but you trusted me. Something inside of you trusted me enough with the souls of your departed loved ones. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come chinwag with us every Wednesday. Find and follow us for free on Apple Podcasts and all major podcast platforms, as well as on YouTube, where we have some wild animations. Got a question only we can answer? Well, post it in the comments, pal. And find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't forget to go to Apple Podcasts and give us five stars, please. I don't want to beg, but I will. I want all of them and a review. Go now. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Treefort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. 
Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Our associate producer is Andrew Miller. Original theme music by Luke Topp, with additional music by Via Mardot. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Audio production, supervision, and editing by Maxwell Carney. Additional audio assistance and mixing by Jeff Neal. Video editing by Brian Barczewski. With additional production management from Renee Levesque. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm. And find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. <laughs>